And my name is David Barry from Jewish Online Magazine. I recently had the pleasure in interviewing Juliet Lander Pope, a life coach and declutterer. I began by asking her, is there an expression, a cluttered home, a cluttered life? Absolutely. And um, I'm sure many of my clients um, from all sorts of different backgrounds would, um, would agree with that. Um, the issue is that clutter is very difficult to define, though. And I do think it's a very personal matter that um, what some people would regard as a really cluttered home, other people would see as being fairly minimal. And um, that's why I, as a declutterer, I say I, I don't actually have an opinion on what anybody's home should look like. I think it's a very personal and subjective matter. Sometimes I walk into people's homes and, you know, there's just two or three books on a table and they feel uncomfortable because there's too much and other times there are books floor to ceiling and I think, oh, is this what we're going to deal with? But actually that's not the problem, it's the kitchen that needs sorting. So um, I, think, I think they do go hand in hand, but it's a very personal um, definition. Um, thank you for that answer, Juliet. Um, you're a professional declutterer and a life coach. Mm -hmm. Is there a relationship between those two professions? Um, there is in the way that I work, because I trained, first of all, as a coach. Um, my background's actually in academia. I was a university teacher for many years. And because I was interested in motivating people, and I was really fascinated in how people overcome um, procrastination and what gets in the way of people learning. So that's why I trained as a coach. And then while I was doing my coaching training, I realized that I could actually apply it to decluttering, which is something I've always done as a hobby and for friends and so on. So the way I work as a declutterer is to coach people through the process. Um, there are lots of different ways of decluttering and in fact um, I belong to a national association of professional declutterers and organisers. There are about 100 of us in the UK, about 30 of us in London I think. Um, I think there's only about three or four in northwest London, but we're a very, very mixed bunch and some people have more of a design background, some people are more interested in um, um, sort of dealing with mental health issues or dealing with design. And I bring my coaching to the decluttering because I think it's really important to work with people and to coach them through decisions rather than tell them what to do. So they sort of go hand in hand in that respect. Mm. When do people decide that they want to declutter? Oh gosh, that's an interesting question. Um, the people I work with tend to fall into a number of different categories. Um, the most obvious ones are when they're facing some big change in life. So it could be moving house. Um, it could be moving house at a particularly difficult time. I mean, moving house is always stressful. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most stressful events that anybody can go through. Mm -hmm. But it's all the more difficult if you are downsizing from a large home to a smaller one. It's very difficult if you are um, maybe find yourself on your own because you've been widowed or divorced or separated. There's a lot of stress in your life and so moving house is an additional difficulty or challenge and so that's the kind of situation. Um, but I also work with people in happier circumstances. Sometimes um, a couple who are expecting a baby and need to make space in their home because they literally haven't got any room to put the baby. Um, sometimes people who are um, expecting visitors, quite often a mother or mother-in-law or for um, sometimes couples where, um, I quite often work with men where they're um, you know, expecting perhaps a girlfriend or a girlfriend's mother's gonna come around and visit for the first time and they want the place to look nice. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a bit more than, it's not just cleaning, it's actually decluttering and clearing space. And what are the issues, what are the issues that people face when they are confronted with decluttering and how are you able to help them? Mm. I would say generally, although every single case is different, every client is different and every home is different, um, but one of the most general issues I face is making decisions. Mm. I, see, I see clutter actually as a symptom of indecision and mm. I think that it, there's so many different decisions involved, whether it's what to keep. Can you give us some examples yes, of, yeah. of, of what decisions people yeah. have to confront with? Yeah, so um, the first set are things like what to keep, 
and what not to keep. And um, then there's a the decision if you decide that you don't actually need something anymore. You might have clothes you've outgrown or books you don't use, textbooks that you don't and need what, anymore. But why would people decide to perhaps keep things that perhaps necessarily they perhaps shouldn't? Oh, all sorts of reasons. Um, one of them is the decision about what to do with them. Mm. You might have decided that actually you're never going to wear those clothes again. I mean, I work with, for example, women who have maternity clothes and they're not going to use them again, but they don't necessarily want to just give them to put them on a skip. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they might want to give them to a particular charity or they might, people hold on to things because they think they might be useful in future. Mm. And even things sentimental that, reasons as well. And sentimental reasons, um, things that people have given you, mm. things that you've collected on travels and holidays and souvenirs. Um, but you haven't got room for them anymore. So what we're going to yes. do, uh, Julia? Yeah. We haven't got room for it, for these possessions anymore. So what we're going to do? How are you going to tackle these problems? Right. Um, one one of the reasons I think my approach works well is that. I try and find purposeful ways of parting oh. from things. I never ever talk about throwing things out or giving things away or sometimes people joke and they say to me, oh, why don't you just hire a skip and throw it all on the skip? Mm -hmm. I think that's actually quite disrespectful to the people who've acquired the belongings. It's disrespectful to the things that people have given you and so on. And I think one of the reasons why people hold on to stuff is because they want to part from it in a way that has becomes meaningful with so, respect yes and with respect mm. so it might be giving it to a charity for some people taking things to a charity shop is fine other people don't want their personal mm. goods on display mm. especially for example someone who's been widowed mm. and has clothes belonging to their former mm. uh, for, you know to, to mm. someone that has been very close to them they don't mm. necessarily want them going to a charity shop so i will find either a gemach or a individual or a charity or a a cause that will put to very good use anything that anybody wants to give away. Um, for example, um, men's clothes that are in reasonable condition could go to a charity to help refugees and asylum seekers. So somebody who's going to apply for their first job but can't necessarily afford to buy a formal suit um, could actually have that opportunity and, and that's an example. Um, children's clothes and toys can go to and, 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 and I think that perhaps if people realise yeah. that their positions are going to go to a good yes. cause, this perhaps makes it easier for them to let go. Absolutely, and they know that not only are they doing a mitzvah by helping somebody else, but actually it's also honouring the memory sometimes of the person that gave them something. Um, but even with less emotional situations, you know, people who have... Um, whose children are growing up and they may have books or clothes or toys or things they no longer need, um, if they know that it's someone else is actually going to make good use of it, um, or sometimes it's also a case of people wanting to sell things. They may have things that are valuable um, and they may want to sell them, but they may not know how to put them on eBay or may not want to use eBay. They may prefer another, another way of selling. So I will help people, whether it's giving it to charity, whether it's selling things, um, or whether it's giving it directly to um, somebody that will really... It, it feels good. Everyone I've worked with always says, you know, actually giving things away makes you feel better than acquiring things. And it's, it's, it's the hardest thing making that first phone call to you? So, um, I don't know. Realising people... that they've got a problem yes. with clutter yes. and, you know, making that first phone call to you, Juliet. Yes. That's, uh, that, that means that they're confronting the challenges and issues. Yes, it can be. It can be. And that's why I offer a free telephone consultation. Oh, okay. Anybody who wants is willing to ring me and I'll chat to them on the phone. Oh. Um, if they're local, I will um, offer to pop round and see, um, see what situation they're in. Yeah. Um, I think it's very, it is a very big decision to invite a stranger into your house and to deal with a problem. On the other hand, people often say to me, um, I'd much rather you do this with me than, you know, my wife, my sister, my yes. friends, what people have often asked me. Sometimes it's, yeah, it's, it's an outsider to yes. get involved, it's easier, isn't yes. it? Yes. I mean, I've worked with someone recently who um, said to me, I've tried to do this with my grown-up children, and they end up shouting at me mm. because they get impatient. And actually, my approach is very much to, to guide people. I can be quite directive in what I think 
not not in not in terms of telling them what to do. I don't have an opinion. You see, that's the beautiful thing. I don't have an opinion on what they should keep or shouldn't keep. I just want to coach people to the point where they can make a decision about how much space do you actually want in your wardrobe? What do you actually want to see on your mantelpiece? Do you want your books, you know, sort of double parked so you can't find anything? What space do you want in your home? What do you want to use? Do you want a dining room table that you have to clear every Shabbat because it's piled full of books and papers and everything? Um, or do you want a space where you can invite people spontaneously and know that you've got room to eat? So it's really about making lots of decisions like that.